Hello everybody, I hope you're all very well. Thanks very much for joining me on my Feel Good Friday vlog. If you're new here, I make videos on YouTube about cats, plants, snacks and knickknacks. On today's video, I'm going to go back out into the yard in because it's finally stopped raining for five minutes. Uh, I don't know what the weather's like where you are in the world, but we're all doomed. <laughs> I'm sat here in England and it's July and I'm not going to lie, it, it, it's terrifying. <laughs> but for the next few minutes, we'll all be together so we can just pretend nothing's happening. And uh, what I'm going to do is show you something I've been putting off in the yard for weeks, possibly months. And uh, well, I'll just let myself explain that to you when I get out there. But basically... Instead of saving something, instead of saving the life of something, I'm going to try and kill something. <gasps> Again. It's murder. So to balance out, I suppose, that horrible job that I've got to do, I'm going to go upstairs, I'm going to take you with me, and I'm going to sort through a rack of jewellery, necklaces, that has just been sort of accumulating over the last few years. And um, it's all a very random collection, but for some reason I think it's like my finest pieces. It's not. It's basically what I pick up or what I take off and I just put there, thinking, that's tidy now. <laughs> that's out the way. That's where it belongs, in my collection. <laughs> It's not a collection at all. It's the good, the bad and the ugly. So I know that it's been sort of in the back of my mind, sort of niggling, telling me off, <laughs> telling me that don't even try to kid yourself. <laughs> sort it out, woman. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to just take everything off the hooks. I'll show you where they all are, where they all live. They live with Elvis. But first of all, the time has come. Off we go into the yard and take care of business. Right then, another day of chaos in the urban jungle. As you can see, big ol' massive crowd. <laughs> I know I go on about saving trees and rescuing plants and dragging things out from the jaws of the incinerator just in the nick of time. But sometimes, it's murder. And sometimes, things just won't die. Oh. You see that space there? I've tried to kill something in that space at least three times, maybe four. This could be the fifth. I don't know. I've lost count. And uh, I'm fed up of it. <laughs> Genuinely, totally, utterly fed up of it. That's how I feel about it. And there's no surprises what it is. It's a buddleia, and I don't know if it was dropped there as a seed from a bird poop, or if it blew in, a bit like me, <laughs> or what. But I've already killed one in that corner, and uh, that took two goes, and I did that successfully. Thought I was in the clear. Not. And even though I've got it back, and I've sprayed it with something horrible, but I'm not going to use weed killer because God knows we're in enough trouble. Um, I can still see life. I can still see the that. So, once again, it's chaos in the yard of peace and tranquility. Go on, girl, get it, get it. Have we got it? Also, I, was ne I nearly said one last little rant, but it probably won't be the last little rant. I thought I was doing really well with my aubergines, saving them from the slugs. But look what they've done. The slugs. I've left the aubergines, but they've munched through the stalks of the flowers. And just let them fall. That's just spiteful. They've even eaten the card look. And left a bit of poop. Can you believe that? They're animals. Anyway, 
that there is the carcass of the buddleia that was thriving in the wall and I'm now going to attempt to see it off once and for all. It's a job for the big ladders. Go fetch the big ladders, Begonia. Right. I'm not convinced it's dead, but my god. It surely looks it. Anyway. This is a lovely view from up here. I've never seen it from this angle before. My treetops. I'm having a cracker and a bit of cheese. And there's intense interest. <laughs> Chills. There we are. Everything looks very nice. Everything's nice and ordered and curated. And... No, it isn't. <laughs> what would Elvis do? Elvis would either shag it, shoot it or eat it. <laughs> but I'm going to sort it. So... Off you come. Oh my god! I can't believe that was hanging on the on that wardrobe. Oh my god! I can't believe I managed to carry it in one arm. I'm a left one. <laughs> I'm a weak one. <laughs> right. I am absolutely gobsmacked that there is so much. Honestly, this must have accumulated over six years and I just thought it was like the odd select piece <laughs> anyway let's get this mountain this bead mountain sorted out so what we got I'm just going to go from the top to the bottom right I haven't really got a plan but the idea is to sort out the uh, the stuff that I really love and is actually special that's supposed to be on the uh, Elvis hoax and uh, filter out everything that's just kind of that I've just shoved it there. So that's the plan. That's the rough idea. It's not a plan. It's hardly, it's not even half a plan. It's not even a half cock plan. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I like this one. Uh, do you remember I bought this because it was in the similar style to that fantastic Mexican cuff I found by chance, by accident? And uh, that is just on, in pride of place now in one of my vintage glass cabinets. I'll uh, I'll show you that again in another video. That one. We'll, we'll, we'll keep this one. So everything that's going on the girls is to keep. Um, boho beads. I love them. They're not my thing. So um, they can go So, I mean, I love them, but I'll tell you why they're not me, because I walk a thin line between sort of naff, wacky, retired art teacher look. And uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with naff, wacky art teachers. I mean, they're some of the greatest people. However, I can't really pull that look off with confidence. And sometimes if I get it wrong, <laughs> It's like the universe has tilted on its axis and uh, it's like it's going to be some sort of global catastrophe. <laughs> so I have to be very, very careful not to get that sort of wacky 1970s nuts in May vibe going on because, no, I just have to come home again. <laughs> and I, and I'm, I don't really get over it for weeks. So, yeah, no, I haven't got enough life left in me to sort of, you know, take those, take those risks. <laughs> Okay, what's next? Oh yeah, love this. Absolutely love this. Vintage full pearl uh, tie necklace. That's a necklace. And uh, super 80s. So yeah. Got a plan to wear that. It's quite mod, isn't it? Sort of mod go-go, two-tone. <laughs> that's that's two-tone. <laughs> Dancing. <laughs> 
Okay, um, oh. Is this anything? I think that is actually a fresh water pearl. Hang on, let's have a closer look. Nope, it is absolutely not. That is 100% plastic. <laughs> fresh water pearl. Okay. Cute little pink plastic 80s choker. No. Do not keep. Massive big statement chunk. I think this is vintage too. Each one is oh it's knotted. Um do you know, I think this is even better than I thought it was in the first place because this feels like sort of, um, what, what came after Bakelite? Do I mean acrylic? Do you know what I mean? This feels like, sort of like a, per a Perspex type plastic. Hang on. This is definitely fabulous. Oh, I can't think of the plastic that I mean. Um, more than acrylic, less than resin, after Bakelite. Anyway, it's amazing. So, yeah, keeping you. Okay, I think I put this in the uh, Hall of Fame because I was heartbroken that I lost this incredible graded, um, graduated black bead choker that I bought in New York at a, a stoop sale. And I left it on a tray in a um, hairdresser's in Brixton. And then I kept meaning to go back because it was on my route home, but I never did. And uh, well, that's long gone. That was years ago. So that's not even close. So that can go. This feels vintage and it's got a nice little clasp. But it's got some stones missing. Wait a sec. No, full pearl. Gone. This one is a little bit enigmatic. Um, I wasn't sure if it was actually vintage or if it was a really strange um, concoction that was quite modern uh, in a vintage style. But it's a wood with plastic gems stuck on it. It's kind of funky. I've never worn it. You see, this is the sort of thing that would be so borderline wacky retired art teacher. No, <laughs> I can't. Honestly, the older I get, the riskier it is for me. I just can't. I just can't. Uh, there will be fabulous cookie retired archers out there that need that and that will complete their look. And uh, it's not, it's, I shouldn't keep it. It's not for me. Okay, next. Oh my God, this thing keeps turning up. This was, oh, there's hair in it. I don't think it's mine. This was in the very first jewellery bag that I bought online on eBay when I started watching uh, YouTubers in America do jewellery hauls from uh, big jewellery bags and what have you and estate sales and um, it, this was the very reason I bought the bag because I could see the faces and I just thought it was really interesting and exciting and uh, I've never worn it and I'm still not sure if it's actually nut or if it's a plastic copy of the nut but these are, oh my hands are filthy from the in the garden um yeah so I, I need to separate this and take better care of it and find out once and for all whether it's um authentic or a tourist replica i think it's real you know the authentic ones are carved nuts and each one represents uh a, i think it's a deity but um i need to do my proper research and confirm that i'll get back to you on that i'll get back to you in, in a later vlog so yeah, that's a keeper. And next. Oh my God, all right, okay. This is purely sentimental. It was given to me by a friend in Bristol when I lived there and um, we're not in touch anymore. We just drifted apart and I think, um, I think she moved away 
after I moved away. So that was all, really. Um, yeah, she was absolutely lovely. She was so kind and generous of a spirit. Really quite a wild spirit, to be honest. Sort of untetherable, if you know what I mean. You knew that uh, you were going to be friends for a short time and a good time. <laughs> and uh, she made no kind of, you know, secret of that. So it, that was just a, a fantastic sort of um, a moment probably about a year it was yeah that was a really joyous little friendship and um i went to another friend's house and i was wearing it and her daughter really really loved it and i was so desperately sort of torn between saying oh here you go just take it uh but also because i felt like such sort of um connection with the friend who gave it to me I thought oh I wish I could give it to you darling but I can't and uh, anyway that decision which I thought was the right one at the time came back to bite me in the bump <laughs> needless to say the child has another necklace that I still think about at night <laughs> uh, well I'll get over it eventually I say child she's probably got a car and a job now <laughs> so anyway even though this is completely knackered all the paint is peeling uh, and I'll never ever wear it again. <laughs> Sentimental. Let's keep up. Okay. Oh, this one. This one is a sunburst choker and it's in no way valuable, but it was the first thing I bought when I went to Milan for the first time to a friend's wedding. She was an international student who came to stay with me for a, a couple of weeks and we just hit it off straight away. You know, when you sometimes just meet someone instantly and that's it, you know, straight away, you're going to have a fantastic time and I literally open the front door and that was it. We were just best mates and uh, it's happened, a, you know, a few times in my life and I absolutely love it when it does. Um, absolutely no effort required no kind of you know oh you know long conversations about what you like and what you you know you like to do the music and all that kind of stuff it's just it's like i suppose people call it a sort of a soulmate it, it happens to me because i'm a leo when i meet sagittarians it's just understood nothing needs to be explained if that makes sense i know it makes sense um oh on the subject of leo Sorry, I um, I might have misled you accidentally in a previous video. It's not my birthday yet. My birthday's next week. And uh, but thank you so much for your birthday wishes. That was so wonderful. I felt a little bit guilty. <laughs> but because I'm a Leo, it, I mean, the whole of July basically is my birthday. Uh, I don't really just focus on the one day. I take it all. And to be honest, because I'm a Leo, I've got six months of Christmas and six months of birthday. <laughs> so, thanks. There we go. So, we keep you. I bought that in uh, Chinatown in Milan. Oh, they look good together, actually. I'm hoping that there's going to be some incredible combinations just appear before my eyes. And uh, that's quite nice. What's next? Oh, yeah, this one. This one. Um, it actually looks better on than it does just hanging there like that. Um, it looks a bit, a bit more sort of tribal and ethnic when you put it on because obviously the, this is quite short and it hangs very long. However, because this is red, white and blue and we are sort of consumed now with the catastrophe that is Brexit, we're all quite a bit sensitive of sort of parading around in anything that's remotely representative of the Brexit red, white and blue sort of logo. Uh, it's got nothing to do with hate in the country and all that kind of stuff. It's just... <sighs> do you know what? No. <laughs> I'm, not keep, I'm not keeping it. <laughs> um, this is better. This is a mid-century vintage pendant. I bought this not too long ago, actually, and um, got it from a charity shop. I think it's about £1.50. And it's the Chinese sign for good fortune, I believe. Yeah. It's not the one I, that I recognised instantly, but I think I googled it and looked it up, and uh, it's sort of good fortune and good luck, I think. If you know, please tell me. 
but it's uh, it's nice. It's got a little bit of age-related wear on there, but I think I'll keep it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This one I can't remember, but I remember featuring it in a big jewelry haul video, maybe around about Christmas time last year. There we are. Um, yeah, I can't remember where I got that. Did I buy that individually? Can someone remind me <laughs> if anyone's taking notes? <laughs> um, I think I got it in a charity shop on its own, not in a big haul. And uh, yeah, it's fabulous. It's quite um, sort of Tibetan, isn't it? Um, it's a little bit percussive. But I wore it once and I thought it might annoy me a little bit because of the noise, but it didn't. It was just uh, sitting there quite proud and I really enjoyed wearing it. So yeah, that's definite keeper. No doubt about that. Uh, next. Put just random pearls make it go. Oh, right, okay, these tiny pearls, and I wondered, because they were so small, if they were genuine, they're filthy. Hang on. Nope, they're just filthy old pearls. Really wish I hadn't put them in my mouth. <laughs> uh, this one? Oh, yep, yeah, um... I'm just waiting for this to come back into fashion. This is incredibly well made. I'm still waiting for the day. It is cool, isn't it? No. Got to be ruthless. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. This one. I got quite attached to just you know, after having it for a couple of years. <laughs> Went down a rabbit hole on the internet one night and uh, worked it out what it was. It's something quite unusual. Um, and now completely forgotten, of course. I, I, I sort of had these two together in my mind. I have them connected with each other for some reason. Yeah, this one, I believe, is a vintage Italian uh, art glass necklace. And if not Murano, certainly a high quality. The, uh, the beads are very weighty and it's extremely good quality. And they're sort of like uh, sweet, they're like lollipops. And I wore this over a fluffy jumper and the whole day I felt like someone called Helena, <laughs> who was not a retired art teacher, but she held uh, life drawing classes and also watercolor classes in the local community center. <laughs> so that's Helena. Oh god, okay, right, okay, there's a whole, there was a whole sort of phase I went through of this one, this one, and this one. I'd alternate them, and uh, it's, it was basically the same woman in my mind, so I just sort of created a character in my mind. I think it might have been in between lockdowns, or, you know, then, it was around about then, <laughs> well, we were all trying to be someone else and somewhere else, doing something else, anything. And uh, yeah, so that was another one. I love this one. It's just pure costume. Uh, but that's a keep. I wonder if I should keep this all. Yeah, I'll keep it. Sorry about the noise. All right, not even making a dent. Okay, I might have got this in Hong Kong, or it might have come out of a jewellery bag, but there was a huge phase of this style for a while in sort of um, the 2010s, and it was all over Hong Kong. These colours were Hong Kong, there were lots of jewellery stores in the market selling this style, and uh, oh look, it's got a tag, it's never been worn. So, yeah, I've got a feeling that this might become uh, a vintage collectible piece in the future, but at the moment it's still very much um, in the realms of no. 
not yet. So I'm still keeping it. <laughs> oh, this one, I think, is Butler and Wilson. Yes, it is. There's the tag. Okay, I don't want to wear this one myself, so um, that can go, even though it's fantastic. Gorgeous quality, Butler and Wilson, the old flower necklace. I don't think it's very valuable, but um, it's still good quality. Uh, this one. Oh, very vintage choker, sort of like nuggets. It's hard plastic. No. This one, definitely a recent, relatively recent purchase. This one is like the Anna Wintour collection, you know, with the, um, the triplet strand, the triple strand. Gem square necklace. This is just a single pink one, but yeah, I love this one. Sit back a bit. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, hang on. Again, in a similar vein to this one, in a similar sort of age bracket, just gone out of fashion. So it was in and now it's out. But it's fantastic. So it's a keeper. And uh, I look forward to the day when it's safe to wear it again. <laughs> It might be tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love this one. Oh my God, I love this one. Sweet tooth and the little tooth. I got it from a charity shop when I went to um, visit the alpacas. Yeah, it was on the way to the town. Not in the town of the alpacas, but en route. Sweet tooth. Great. It's a bib. Well, I'm not getting rid of very much. Maybe it, it was all better than I thought it was. Maybe it was already curated. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> it was just chucked together. Um, right, okay. Don't need that. Love the colour. Don't need that. Oh, I love this. This is a vintage 80s chunk of chunk. Really good quality. Uh, it's not named, unfortunately, but um, it's in that Dior style. But it's not Dior. Keeping it. It's so heavy. It's really good quality. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's just get this out of the tangle. Now this. Oh my God, I love it so much. Right, okay, this is where the story about the, um, the, the child and the necklace and years and years later, it continues. <laughs> because I went to Bangkok um, when I got sick of renovating this house and I had what I thought was unfinished business. I just needed to check out what the city was like and if it was going to suit me because I'd been offered it quite a good job at quite a good place. Um, but there was something in the back of my mind that was just saying... <sighs> don't commit to this just yet and uh, I'm glad I didn't really because Bangkok was not for me but the markets uh, obviously the Chattachuk market was absolutely joyous oh my god it was just like if I had created something in my mind that was it it was incredible and uh, it was just so hot and steamy and it was it was like a magical warren they did warn you they said you know when you go if you see something you want, buy it straight away because you'll never, ever, ever find it again. And that's true to a certain degree. But I've got extra special radar skills. <laughs> if you're a normal person, just out shopping, you'll never find it again. So, um, yeah, and, and I just love the way that you could step into one booth and then step out of the booth and be in like a different time zone be in a different universe you just go through booths and shops and stalls and it was so, it, obviously it was never ending There's, there is no end to it and uh, 
nowhere ever looked the same twice. Oh, it was incredible. It was an amazing place. I had some of my best experiences were in Chattachuk Market. It was literally like being on another planet in another universe. Amazing. Anyway, so the story with this <laughs> was I found this stall and it uh, had unique pieces. These are all handmade and uh, they were quite expensive. I can't remember how much, but they were fairly priced for the work that's involved. And uh, I selected one that was a heart shape in the pink and I bought it and I thought as soon as I left, I should have bought more, but it was quite expensive. And I thought, don't, you know, just just make sure you're not, you know, you haven't got heat stroke. <laughs> Because I had to carry all this stuff back to England via Hong Kong, so I just I always had to double double check myself that I was you know back in a car or something because <laughs> my heat. <laughs> I nearly bought a little mini plane in an antique antique centre. Anyway, I got everything back. Um, but yeah, so I had this necklace and. Uh, Oh, an amazing thing happened in Bangkok. I was completely on my own. I was there for a few months and uh, I got a message from a friend I'd met in Hong Kong who said, oh, I'm here. Do you want to meet for coffee? And I just thought, oh my God, more than anything I do. Um, and we met up and we just had coffee and we went sort of around uh, kind of an old part of Bangkok and had a lovely evening. And I was wearing the necklace that was this felt and heart shaped. And I felt like it sort of saturated itself with that night, you know, with the good experience and the vibes and the and the sort of oh the loveliness and then uh, later on I went and I met another friend in another place like a few weeks later and it was the the mother of the child that I denied this necklace <laughs> years and years and years ago back in back in England <laughs> and uh, oh, we had a lovely evening we went out for dinner and uh, she said oh I love your necklace and I just was overwhelmed with guilt from all those years back. And I just said, here you go. And took it off and gave it to her. She, like she resisted, but I just had to give it to her. And uh, anyway, there was a, a a long ongoing giggle and a struggle from my emotions about, <laughs> about the necklaces. Uh, so anyway, bereft of not having the necklace, but happy that I'd, you know, finally put right a wrong from the past. When I went back to Bangkok, I thought, I've got to go back and get another one. <laughs> so radar was on, off I went. It must have been, oh God, it must have been about two weeks of wandering around that market looking for that stall. <laughs> Literally just round and round and round. I don't think I, I don't think I went up at night. I don't know if it was even daytime. <laughs> but sure enough, found it. And I got this one and I got a yellow one in a heart shape that is on uh, the puma in the jungle room. So th the longest story in the world, uh, but worth it, I think. Yeah, absolutely adore this. This is just legendary in my life. It's fabulous. Okay, I just pulled out two mid-century ones. This one, a uh, chromed brittleist pendant, and this one is a Sarah Coventry uh, pendant, later than um, mid-century, I think. But um, I've got the matching brooch that goes with that. So um, what I might do is put those two together and list them on eBay or Etsy as a set. And I think I might do something radical and list this chromey one as well. And you know what? I think I might list that. I might do a, a job lot of um, vintage necklaces because it's just, I'm just absolutely swimming in it. I've got so many. I was collecting Sarah Coventry for a while and um, I might have to thin out that collection just for space and just for headspace as well as house space. So yeah, I might do that. You saw this one last week. I just picked that up at the flea market last Wednesday. So that's a uh, keeper. Right here. Yeah. Oh, maybe not. Or maybe separate. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I bought that because it was big. Uh, I can go. Oh, 
What are you doing in there? You shouldn't be in there. You shouldn't be in there. You should be safely tucked away in one of the treasure chests. There, right, I, I think I can see what's going on here. There, this was my uh, favourite stuff. And there's some absolute gold in here that has just been completely drowned out by a lot of old stuff that I've just shoved. So what I'm going to do is pick through uh, without you and be back in one second. Right, I'm back. I've sorted it out, but it's about an hour later. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you in batches. <laughs> just this here is just purely a sentimental. Not all of it, just two pieces, but it's entangled with just stuff I've shoved on. Oh, it's, I don't know how long I'm going to take to get untangled, if at all. But this one, I wore that just endlessly in the 90s. Uh, and this one, same, just, you know, it was my two, these were my two, put it on, off you go, necklaces in the 90s. So that's how much I care about them. <laughs> this one I bought in the 80s and I think it's the, the most well-traveled, enduring necklace I own, if not in in existence in the whole world um i can't tell you where this has been it's been places i haven't uh, but it's found its way back to me and um yeah uh, next i just absolutely love this orange color look how shiny they are i don't know where i bought it probably from a high street shop but that's a coupon for sure it needs a new pendant, so I'll, <laughs> I've got plenty to spare. I'll swap over that tassel, which is a little bit tatty now, uh, and put something funky on the end of that. I found quite a few really beautiful... I'll just get rid of this dust from the necklaces. Really beautiful mid-century modern necklaces. This one is the just dream isn't that amazing oh fantastic you've seen it before but um i forgot i had it so it's like new now it's like having a new necklace uh, i must wear that actually uh more mid-century uh this one i need to stick that back down classic uh late 60s early 70s quite danish looking this one, vintage, um, quite sort of Afghan in style, Middle Eastern, four turquoise, but lots of lovely detail. That was um, one of my first purchases at the flea market. So that's lovely. That always gets comments when I wear that. This one, um, it's a lariat and I think it's vintage and it's got a patent on the back. Um, so I don't know, there's something intriguing about it. I'm not sure why. This one, absolutely classic Sarah Coventry. Concentric rectangles. I can't remember the name of it. <sighs> I'm sure you know. <laughs> and this one, this one is a vintage mid-century um, pendant by Miracle. This one, oh. Fly's arrived. It's very late today. Um, this one is a vintage mid-century molder etched copper pendant for uh, Pisces. There we go. Molder from Malta. Uh, I just bought it because I love molder jewellery. I've got some fantastic etched uh, cuff bracelets that I'll show you in another video. Uh, here we are. Uh, standard issue mid-century brutalist, mid-century modernist piece. Lovely condition, that one. Um, medallion shape. Yeah. Uh, a little bell, a little vintage Chinese bell. Uh, this one, I think, is actually quite old. I think this one is 60s, and it's a really modern sort of go-go 
um, big statement chunk. That, it, that's not broken. It's just a bit hooped up. Uh, yeah, so that's wild. It feels quite industrial. I don't know if I could wear that, but I love it. And these three absolute gems that I completely forgot about. Um, I found this, I think it was in a jewellery bag. And this is actually solid sterling silver, this band. And um, I think I found it in a jewellery bag. Uh, and this is absolutely gorgeous. I think it might be Swarovski crystals with a full pearl in the middle. And that could be a little bit of gold plating on the edges. But it's gorgeous. Uh, completely forgot I had it. It's like having a new necklace. Um, this one is a, a vintage Mikey, I think. Yep, Mikey. And, oh, Mikey was my favourite costume jewellery in the 90s. I used to go to Selfridges in London and uh, I used to love going through the shelves because they had them all on the counter. And they, oh, it was so sparkly and so gorgeous. I bought loads. I used to buy... <laughs> the same as now really anything with a with a rhinestone on it <laughs> but they had those lovely department store lights on in Selfridges that used to make everything just absolutely flash <gasps> oh I was lost <laughs> that's lovely actually because it's got a nice drop uh this one again is a vintage Mikey probably 90s yep 90s I think um from Selfridges and it's a little bit tangled but it has a sort of Native American influence. Um, and it's a big old choker with an like an, a blood orange diamonty center. And be they, they hang straight, they're just tangled up. But yeah, that was one of my favorites for a long time. And uh, speaking of favorites, I've got my all time favorite coming up. Um, almost next but penultimately I've just found this that I completely forgot about this massive vintage Jaeger bruiser look at the size of that um are you looking for a statement <laughs> make one isn't that incredible it's enormous huge big geometric um, perspex acrylic pieces with metal and uh, it's all in red and greys and chromes. I think that that is Jaeger from the noughties, from the uh, Y2K era. Um, I mean, it's timeless, really. Hugely inspired, obviously, by the 60s and all that. Do you know what? That fly, he might be late, but he's making up for lost time. Can you hear him? Um, I've already on the murder streak of for something in the yard and I'm not going to kill a fly today um yeah so look at that <laughs> that's a weapon uh, if you need to kill something that, that'll do it um yeah so very last piece hidden amongst all the, um all the everything all the bits of everything uh is this and this is without doubt my favorite necklace in the whole world I absolutely love it. I found it on a trip to the seaside and it's a vintage mid-century, um, probably 60s. It d did have a bit more sort of gold, um, it's not gold plating, but it had a little bit more gold coating on it. And it's uh, like a little Aztec or Mayan man. And uh, it's a very, very long pendant. I could just wear this every day. I literally could just put this on over anything and off I go. <laughs> so yeah, love him or her. I think it's a boy. I think it's a boy. Don't know. I think it's a boy. Um, so there, there we go. <laughs> well, I did manage to get rid of a small amount. Um, but not really and I've got a funny feeling that it's probably all going to go back <laughs> I'm so glad I went through everything though because there was so many in there that I'd completely forgotten about that I just totally forgot I had it's like having a massive 
load of birthday gifts given to me from myself. <laughs> Nothing near in that. So uh, there, there we go. I love them. I'm happy. I hope you're happy too. Thank you ever so much for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. But uh, yeah, if you don't want to, you don't have to. <laughs> do we like? Um, if you if you do want to, I'd be delighted and very very grateful. So thanks again. I hope you have a fantastic week coming up. Um, take care. Thank you. Lots of love from me and Begonia Coconut. And goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I just can't leave. I don't want to leave. <laughs> I'm just gonna go.